Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and thank you for joining me today. Um, it's been quite some time since we put out a video, about two and a half years in fact, um, and I'll get into why and sort of uh, what's going on now, but I just want to welcome you back if you stayed subscribed uh, all this time and got your notification and came in to um, see what was up. I appreciate your, your time and your joining me today. So um, it has been a while and there's a bunch of reasons for that, uh, personal reasons. Um, the main reason is that I haven't been crafting very much. Uh, we haven't been crafting as much as we used to um, in the last couple of years. And um, part of that was my repetitive stress injury from doing physical labor um, at the natural tannery that I founded a number of years ago. So it took almost a year and a half, about 18 months to recover uh, my shoulder so that I could knit again. Um, knitting was something that was um, inflaming my joint and creating a lot of pain. So I had to find um, some other pastime, uh, something else to occupy me um, during that period. And um, I ended up going down a path of kind of personal development and learning um, some new skills. And um, I did start a YouTube channel kind of around some of those topics. Um, so that's where I've kind of been over the last couple of years. Um, but lately I have gotten back into knitting again. Um, I did finally finish the Felix sweater that you uh, may uh, recall I was knitting a couple of years ago if you were a dedicated viewer. Um, so yeah, it's all finished and I do, I wear it regularly. Um, <laughs> and uh, I do have a few ideas for content that fits well with this channel. So today I'm actually going to um, launch into a new uh, content topic um, and that's uh, creative journaling and stationery and that kind of thing. Um, we're not going to shift the overall tone of this channel so it's not going to be exclusively about stationery and and writing and journaling and fountain pens um, but we are going to bring that new interest into the fold um, and hopefully we will have other videos. I do have some ideas for natural dyeing things that I'm going to be uh, working on in the spring of 2023. Um, I've got some recipes to share, some knitting project updates and and hopefully a new sweater off the needles by the end of January. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, and just to reward you for uh, clicking on this video and checking out our, our latest offering, um, before we get into our notebook uh, lineup, um, I will uh, mention some gifts that I received over the holidays um, that are more kind of yarn and uh, traditional Gage Hill Crafts kind of content. Um, so the first one I'll show off is, are these beautiful pink socks that my mother knit for me. Um, she's also an avid knitter and they're made out of sport weight yarn and so they're nice and thick and very cozy um, but they're still thin enough that I can get them into a shoe. So thank you mom um, for that. They're very beautiful. I don't know what the pattern is um, but if I find out I'll put it in the show notes below. Um, the other thing that I received from her was um, this Freya Fiberworks um, sock kit um, and I don't know if I'll, I'll actually knit socks out of it um, but you can see they're, they're dyed to match um, socks, so you can get matching socks. I would probably be tempted to knit one um, with the blue at the toe and the other one with the yellow at the toe so that you get sort of mismatched socks. Um, but I might, I might do socks. If I do, I'll probably use a pattern from Hey Brownberry. She's got a couple of sock patterns out um, that I haven't tried yet, and uh, those look promising. Um, if I don't knit socks, I might actually use this to knit uh, along with some other yarns and uh, make a shawl out of it, because I've seen people using the Freya Fine Hand Paints um, yarns. The colors are so delicious, and um, wearing it as more of a showpiece. Um, and speaking of shawls, I hadn't been able to wear them very much because um, I could never get them to stay on properly. And a friend of mine, uh, we met up with her and her husband for lunch a few weeks ago, and she was wearing a shawl that she kept in place with one of these um, leather cuffs, shawl cuffs. And I had seen these going around. They were very popular and trendy maybe back in 2017, 2018. Um, so when we went to Rhinebeck this year, um, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival back in October, uh, that was one of the things that I was on the hunt for was um, shawl cuffs. And we went to just about every booth on that fairgrounds, there's hundreds of them, and no one was selling these. And I was really surprised. Um, but my husband, uh, Rick, um, decided that this would be a nice gift 
for the holidays and so thank you Rick um, they're great so I've already worn uh, this one um, with a, a shawl that has some blues in it and it looked really nice with the kind of chocolate brown and then he got me this other one as well which is like a lighter sort of orangey tan I think it goes well with this color um, which is my favorite it's kind of seafoam green so and this one's a little bit wider um, so a couple different styles um, for different uh, styling options for shawls so that'll be that'll be great and actually I have a couple of shawl patterns that I've been wanting to knit but again knowing that I wasn't really wearing shawls I wasn't as motivated so now I am um, the other thing that my mom got me is this nice little bucket tote bag um, it's soft and flexible so it you know it crushes up folds up um, you could put it into another bag or take it with you um, and this is from modern daily knitting um, used to be known as uh, Mason Dixon knitting um, but it looks like they're partnering with Brooklyn Haberdashery to have these made. So um, it's very nice. It's high quality, um, like quilter's cotton kind of fabric on the outside. I love the colors and this kind of funky lemon slice pinwheel pattern on the outside. And then on the inside, it's lined fully with this nice um, kind of lightweight canvas. So it's great. Nothing to snag your yarn on. No, no Velcro snaps or zippers. It just has a nice drawstring. And you could probably, I could probably fit like a shawl um, in here or, you know, a couple of hat projects or something like that. Um, so thank you again, Mom, for all the lovely gifts. Um, in terms of current projects and plans, I am nearly done with a sweater that's almost taken me this, this full two years to knit. Um, I'll do a video on that and talk about it uh, when I'm finally done. But I have half of the first sleeve, so I feel like I've finally cracked all the problems with fit and um, that I was having. And so I look forward to sharing that. I have some recipes uh, that I wanna talk about and we're hoping to get uh, Rick back into brewing mode before too long here so that we can share some beer recipes. So in the meantime, again today, I have um, kind of a rundown. Um, I have been on kind of journal planner tube a little bit um, doing some research because I found that creative journaling in my personal life and then a more structured and organized way of keeping notes at work have both been really helpful. Um, and people do these kind of planner stack videos at the beginning of the year or, you know, what notebooks am I using for 2023? So I thought I'd jump on that bandwagon and share my notebook choices for this year in case it's interesting or helpful. Um, again, if it's not, don't worry. Um, this isn't going to become an exclusively a stationary channel. It's just going to be mixed in occasionally with the rest of our content, but we'll be getting back to making here uh, more regularly. In terms of frequency, I don't really know what that's going to look like right now, but I'm hoping to put out at least uh, one video a month. Um, and so we'll just, we'll aim for to do another video in January and we'll see how that goes. And if you have any ideas for content that you'd like to see, um, feel free to leave a suggestion in the comments below. Um, if you like this planner stack style video, um, let me know that so I can be encouraged to make more of it. Um, or if it's really not your thing, you can let me know that too, because um, I want to kind of blend what I'm doing with what you're interested in. So, um, so that's it for me for now. We'll go down to the table and spend some time talking about notebooks. I hope you are all very well, and I'll see you soon. All right, so let's start with my work notebook first. Um, and I wanna talk about supplies as well. Um, over here on the right, we have a selection of pens and markers that I've been using this last year. Um, and those include some mild liners, as well as this Monami set um, that's called Gray Mood. It comes with um, five different colors that are all in these kind of softer tones. Um, I really like these. They work well on the um, paper that uh, goes with the notebook, which I'll talk about in a minute. And they're um, kind of neutral enough to use in a professional setting, but brightly colored enough to be interesting. Um, I'm not really a beige on beige on pastel beige kind of uh, person. That aesthetic seems to be very popular in the um, journaling YouTube space um, and planner YouTube space, uh, which is fine, but I like a little bit more color in my setups. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, to kind of define my setups in this notebook. And then the other things that I like to use are um, the Uni Jetstream inks. So I have a Uni Ball 1 pen here, but it will accept Uni Jetstream refills. 
Um, and this is just a nice simple pin body that's comfortable to hold that holds that refill. Um, I also for a time got really into these Sarasa dry nanos that are a 0.3 um, very thin ballpoint tip and they write very fine. I can show you that in this notebook as well. Um, but unfortunately these are, are not refillable so this entire pen would have to be thrown in the trash um, and then to buy a new one. So instead of this I'm going to be going with a fountain pen for my everyday writer. I've been trying this towards the end of this year. Um, this is a Pilot Kakuno and it's marketed uh, for children. Um, so you'll see it has a smiley face here on the nib, and there you go, you can kind of see the little tongue sticking out. Um, but it's a great um, starter fountain pen for anybody, I think. It's a good size um, when you post it. It's comfortable even for those with larger hands, and um, I like it a lot. It's more comfortable for me than like a Lamy Safari with that very defined uh, triangular grip. This has a slight triangular grip, but it's broader than the Lamy, so it's easier to hold, it's easier to write with. And I like the Pilot ink that came with it because it's quick drying, so I'll probably continue to use Pilot inks um, in this pen for my work notebook. Um, it has a slip cap, it stays uh, wet, so I don't have to worry about this drying. If I'm gone for a week, I come back to work and it starts right up. Um, and this is more environmentally friendly, being able to refill. Um, I have a converter for it or I'll refill this cartridge. I won't buy cartridges. So that'll be cutting down on my plastic use from doing all this kind of thing. I don't know what I'll be doing in terms of buying markers in the future. I don't really like the idea of using a lot of single-use plastic markers, even though they last for a while. Um, but there are refillable markers out there, so if you have a solution for that, um, let me know. The last um, tool I wanted to mention here for my work notebook is this Pilot Friction Pen. I have this one that has a three color, um, and I do like the friction ink and being able to erase things. Um, I thought I would be more dependent on this this year than I ended up being. I ended up writing more with the Uniball um, and the Sarasa Nano pens that are not erasable. So I have used this a little bit to put in some temporary headings and things um, and write down some events that might change in this notebook. Um, so if I'm ever not sure if something might change, I'll use the Pilot Friction Pen. But again, it's all plastic refills in here. And so I, I wanna kind of veer away from using a lot of um, disposable plastic stuff. So I'll be using this you know, more minimally um, this year. So let's talk about the notebook itself. Um, here's my one from last year. And I was never really a paper planner person. Um, it's not something I used in my personal life. That's just some gold ink. Um, I use a digital calendar for my, my personal appointments and things like that, events that I'm doing with my family. Um, and I use a digital calendar at work for things like meetings um, and scheduling appointments with people. But what I use this notebook for is notes, agendas, um, and project planning and planning ahead. And that has worked out really well. In the past, I used to be kind of a, a legal notepad person. I would just have a big legal notebook and I would fill up a page with, with all kinds of random information, notes, um, events, uh, to-do lists and things. And then I would just tear the pages off as I got through those lists. And I don't know how that really worked well. Um, I never kept a record of what I'd done. Um, I didn't have material that I could look refer back to uh, particularly, and I realized that in my my current professional life, that's just not going to work for me. So um, I bought this Wonderland 222 planner last year and set it all up. You can see I have um, some tabs and some different things in here, and um, it worked really well. I refined my system throughout the year, and now I think I've honed it into what I'm going to be doing for this year. So that's what I wanted to. Um, show you. This is just a, a cover I bought separately and this is this year's Wonderland 222. It's the same planner um, for 2023. Um, and you can find detailed walkthroughs of this online as well as comparison videos comparing this with other planners, um, but I'll just show you how I'm going to be using it. So on this first page, which is a key, um, uh, we have my color palette that I've selected for the year with the different markers and the idea is to use uh, whatever the color of the month is is the main color for my setups and then um, choosing a few accent colors based on my my mood 
um, when that month starts. So I'm not pre-planning all of my colors, but I did wanna have a nice selection of different colors throughout the year. So I like how this turned out. Um, I am allowing myself a little bit of decoration in here um, just to keep it interesting. So I really like these um, MU, uh, I think these are by Muji, uh, MU Craft Series print-on stickers. These are rub-on um, stickers. So the way these work is that you cut out the, the thing that you want to place on the page. You peel off this um, kind of tissue paper backing and then you put the, the clear side down and you rub to transfer the sticker. Um, and I like that because they look natural. They look like I might have drawn them myself. And I also like that they're super thin. So you can barely feel them on the page and they don't bulk up the notebook. Um, the other kind of stickers that I like are these washi tape stickers. And again, um, they're very, very thin. Not quite as thin as the transfers, but super thin. And they, um, they look really nice and natural. So I'm not gonna be putting a ton of decor in here. Um, it's not really my style, but I, you know, just as much as anybody else, I do like an attractive looking uh, page. It's a little bit motivating. So I'm allowing myself a couple of stickers per page, basically. Um, the functional thing that I use the most of are these tabs. I got these off of a, a major bookseller online and I don't even remember what they were called. Um, but if you look on Amazon and you look for um, colored, tabs um, you can probably find these these are removable tabs um, and i like them because they kind of match um, the colors that i have on my cover and then they also match my color palette for the year so i was pleased with the way um, this happened to work out and they came in a huge pack i probably have enough for the next 10 years in these colors um, but i like these just to mark important pages and i like that they're removable i have one that I use on the current week, whatever that is. And then I have others to mark important uh, notes or things that I've written down. Um, I, I don't use the bullet journal method as it's created, but I also use kind of a hybrid method where I use a bullet journal technique in a dated planner. So um, having tabs where I can refer back and forth to things is really helpful. So like I said, I'm going to be using the key page for my color palette here, and I might also draw in my key down here. I do use some uh, bullet journaling kind of symbols um, to indicate tasks or things that got moved to another day or moved to um, the next week or that kind of thing. After the index, we have calendars, and this notebook um, comes with four calendars, so it came with um, the, the current year for this notebook is 2023, so that's this calendar here. Up here it had 2022, and you can see I covered over this. This is where again, I'm going to track my paid time off and balances remaining. We have different kinds of time off, and they accrue and can be used in different ways. There's a lot of rules, like you can take two hours of this at a time, but you have to use a full day of that at a time, um, and so forth. So it can get a little complicated, um, so that's why I'll track this. This is a 2024 calendar, and I do like having the next year at a glance. Um, and so I'll be writing in any uh, meetings or appointments that come in 2024 because this notebook ends in December of 2023. So I'll just make a note of them here and then I can transfer them next year. Our next spread is a year overview. And what you have here are the months across the top, all 12 of those, and then all of the days in the month. Um, they're fairly small boxes, and what I'm going to be using this for is statistics, which is what I've written in up here. Um, I keep track of questions that I've answered in my job, and I just do that by making hash marks. Last year, in my previous notebook, I used a much more complicated way of tracking that across multiple pages, and I found that that just wasn't necessary. I think everything will fit on here. Um, down here, I'm going to record attendance for any workshops or classes that I teach because that's something else that we have to report to our accrediting body. On the next page, you can see a little bit of minimalist decorating because my printer did a weird thing down here and made a blob of ink. So I just covered that up. Um, this is gonna be my 2023 goals and then my skills and professional development over here. So um, we actually plan on a fiscal year basis. So this will be a half year of goals from January to June of 2023. And then any new skills that I learn or professional development things that I do or things like, um, you know, saving our institution money by negotiating a better deal on contracts or things like that. Um, that'll all go in here. 
on this page, the next page is 2024 goals. And so the same thing, goals for next fiscal year and then skills and professional development. Um, now you'll see this page looks a little weird and that's because I papered over this with grid paper that I printed on sticker paper. Um, up in the front of this notebook, they have uh, quarterly setups. That's what these are. And then there's all these trackers in here. There's 12 months of like habit tracking, which I know for some people is um, really nice because they'd be drawing that in anyway. But I don't use habit tracking in a work setting. So I've just taken this um, grid design and printed it out on sticker paper and covered over. And I'm just gonna use all of these pages for notes. I have lots of meetings. I have lots of projects going on this year that I'll need to keep track of details on. Um, and have meetings about and take notes for that. So this is just extra note pages. It's about 25 extra note, notes pages between the trackers and the quarterly spreads that I'm not using, as well as the whole month of December, um, which is in here, December of 22, which I'm also not using because I used December in my previous year's book. So this was a great way to like reclaim some space and make this notebook work for me. Um, at the start of each month there uh, in this notebook, there is also a previous month's overview and a next month's um, kind of planning page. They look like this. Um, it's fairly open structured, but you do have four slightly darker uh, boxes along each side with heading space and then an open uh, space here to you know reflect on your goals or check on your progress. I don't use this um, for that purpose. What I use it for are two monthly meetings that I have. Um, so this will be one monthly meeting and this will be another monthly meeting. And I'll have that at the top of each month that they go with. So um, I like that about this notebook. I can kind of keep organized by time period and see what I've been working on throughout the year um, as it occurred. Now, um, Unlike uh, a notebook like the Hobonichi Weeks, um, the Wonderland 222 does have the monthly spreads um, spread throughout the book, so intermixed with the weekly spreads rather than in a clump at the front of the notebook. And I like that. I like being able to have my monthly overview uh, like this and then go into the weekly spread like that. So um, I don't use a ton of things on the monthly spread, um, but what I do use it for is to mark holidays and to paint time off as well as um, things that are going on at, an, at the academic uh, institutional level. So I work at an academic library and part of my job um, overlaps with things like getting new accounts set up for students and making sure that we're providing services when students are starting and ending classes or being around to support them during exams. So those kinds of dates are important to my job and I usually put them in here. I've just sat down with our academic calendar and penciled them all in um, up through August of this year because that's, that's the information that I have. So you can see I have things like online term one begins and residential classes begin. Um, so that's the kind of information I put on my monthly spreads. Some months get uh, more active than others. I think June is probably busier. Yeah, so you can see during the summer we have a lot of these like shorter terms. Um, so it's just a good, uh, a good chance to kind of look at this and it also helps me figure out when would be a good time to take vacation or not. So that's, that's the January monthly spread. And then the weekly spreads look like this. Um, I've covered this up because it said December and I'm not gonna use these pages for that. Um, but this is your typical weekly spread. So it's a Monday start calendar. You do have time blocking here, but it's very faint. And I ignore that because I, again, I don't use this to schedule my events. I schedule using uh, an electronic calendar that other um, coworkers and my boss and other people can see. Um, so what I use these weekly pages for are task lists and notes. I do like to use the top portion for any day specific items and then I use the rest of the page for other things. So I'll show you what my typical spread looks like. I set up the first week that we're going to come back um, and this is this is kind of my default spread that I have um, been using for the last couple of months in my, my previous year's notebook and it's been working really well for me. Um, so I don't know if you can uh, see this very clearly. I'll hold this closer to the camera. Um, but again, here we have that Monday start and then the stacked weekends, which I know some people don't like if they do a lot of planning for the weekends. They like to have individual columns for those, but um, I don't work on the weekends and so I can use these for other things. So here I have noted that we are off on 
the 2nd and 3rd of January. We don't actually come back until the 4th of January. Um, I have a regular standing meeting on Thursday afternoons, so I write that in. And if I have any day specific tasks, that's where I'll write this up here. Um, just general running task list for the week goes here, and I'll be filling this in with a few things that I know that I need to do as soon as we get back. Um, typically, I have about two or three tasks starting out this week, and then um, I'll add to it and cross things off as I'm working on stuff. I did do a little bit of decor here with those transfer stickers just to brighten this up, but I do like to keep it fairly minimal. I tend to fill up most of the page with notes and things. Um, and speaking of notes, I use the left-hand side of the page. Uh, we have a, a regular um, month, uh, weekly staff meeting for the library staff, and there's usually a lot of good updates there. So I'll take a fair number of notes um, each week for that. And then over here on the Saturday portion, instead of that, I have a waiting on. So anything I'm waiting for someone else to do or reply to or make a decision, um, I have a lot of interaction with both people on our campus and also outside vendors. And it's very easy for little details to get lost in the mix. So I always like to, um, you know, anytime I get an email or send, you know, leave somebody a message or, uh, send a note and say, can you please send me this? I'll write it down here and that way I can tick it off when I get what I asked for. And then again here, this is um, my own task list. And then here is a section for agenda. And I learned about this from Lethbridge Paper. Um, she uses an agenda section in her uh, planning and I thought that was cool. Um, for any meeting that I'm going to, if I have an agenda item that I need to speak on or a question I need to ask, I make sure I write it down here so that I don't get to the meeting and go, oh, I had something important to say and now I can't think of what it is. Um, so that's uh, that's been very useful. So that is most of my, um, my notebook. Um, the back of this book does have blank notes pages, but they're not for the whole year. So these say uh, daily down here, but it wouldn't be enough to get you through even every workday. Um, there's about 90 pages in here, and I work a, uh, something around 200 days a year. So um, the daily pages wouldn't be enough for a page a day, but that's okay because I don't necessarily need a whole A5 sheet of paper um, every day, especially because I have the opportunity to take um, to take notes. So I take, uh, again, those meeting notes um, for my monthly meetings. I take on these pages, and for my... Uh, weekly staff meetings I take notes here. So this would just be more for things like uh, project planning, long-term um, planning, taking notes when I'm attending training sessions, and that kind of thing. And that, that's worked out really well. I think I have maybe uh, two or three blank pages from last year. Um, so I really did make full use of this notebook, but I didn't need more space. Um, so that's what I'm going to continue doing this year. All right, next I will talk about my personal notebooks and then um, stuff I use for kind of a reading uh, setup. Um, so my, my personal history with trying to journal on a regular basis is very, uh, not very great um, up until last year. I've tried all different kinds of things. I've tried blank paper, lined paper, cream paper, white paper, big notebooks, small notebooks, dated, undated, um, so in 2020, I bought these um, structured planners around astrology from a company called Magic of Eye um, because I thought I was getting into astrology. I was interested in learning more about it, and I thought this would be a great way for me to learn and also keep um, more of a journaling habit. Um, the structure in here is... Uh, well, there's just a lot of structure. Um, so you had... Uh, this kind of overview, month at a glance, major transepts, um, you know, the way the planets are moving around. And then you had planetary um, activities going on for the monthly layout. Um, you can see I had a lot of plans for June of 2020 and all of it got canceled. Um, so it's all crossed off. Um, and then you had monthly goals, intentions, uh, weekly goals, and then each week was this kind of a setup, which I call like the elementary school planner setup, because um, this is kind of a notebook style that um, I had when I was in elementary school. What I found was in, in here, I was just trying to journal 
uh, more regularly and I thought well if I just have a little space you know that won't be so intimidating rather than a whole page um, and I started out strong in January and February and then March something really weird happened and I don't know why. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, in March, the pandemic hit, and I think I just lost my focus, um, lost my ability to really say anything other than what the hell's going on, um, and stopped journaling for a couple of months. I did pick it back up briefly in May and tried a few more pages. Um, I tried uh, doing some of these affirmation kind of activities for, um, for like, the the new moon and the full moon, um, but their prompts didn't, weren't really resonating with me. And so, um, you know, as the year went on, I basically abandoned this. Um, so that didn't work out. Um, what's worked a little bit um, that year was that my mother had also given me this just um, blank uh, journal. It's, um, it is lined, but it um, doesn't have any structure, no dates or anything. And this is really pretty. Um, I love this cover. This is by Peter Popper Press. And this book is um, held up really well. I've actually been writing it in it for three years. So I filled up about a quarter of it um, in 2020. I wrote about that much. And um, I'll show you one of the last. I'm on the last page now. So, um, But this is what the paper looks like. It's slightly cream. It does have lines, but they're not really dark. And I enjoyed writing in here. Um, the problem was that I just wouldn't do it very regularly. So I journal maybe two, three days in a row, and then a few months would go by. And then I'd pick it up again for a day or two, and then months would go by. So I was getting a little frustrated with myself because I wanted to be more regular, but it just wasn't happening. Um, so that, that continued on through 2020. 2021, same thing. I was just journaling sporadically, um, not really doing it very, uh, very cons consistently at all. And then in 2020, Two, um, so this year, um, I have been using this Hobonichi um, day, page a day. It's meant to be a planner um, where you can uh, plan out your activities um, and you know keep a track of to-do lists, but I have been using it as a page a day journal and I've been absolutely loving it. And I'm so proud of myself because it is December 30th and I just have today and tomorrow to fill in and I will have a complete book. I will have written every day this year. So I wanted to show you a little bit how I'm using this and then what I'm morphing into for next year. Um, so these uh, yearly overview pages I didn't really use. I think I will um, track my time off here as well as in my work planner because my work planner stays at work and this one stays at home. So for next year, I'll probably put my days off here. Then the monthly view looks like this and it's not very much room. I was trying to cram a lot of information into here. Um, I even uh, was adding in my solutions for Wordle and um, how many, you know, what my score was for that day. Um, here I was noting calendars, birthday, or calendar items, birthdays, um, and then events. So um, either when I chatted with someone or when we went out to dinner um, or did something like that as well as um, posting videos to YouTube on my other channel. So um, that was kind of a lot to cram into these pages, um, but I'll show you what I'm doing uh, for next year, which is a little bit simplified version of this. Um, I did a variety of things in this journal. So one of the, I think one of the reasons that I struggled to journal consistently in pre previous years was that I had too many limitations and too much structure. Um, I had a lined paper, which meant I didn't want to do art on lined paper. I don't know why I have a mental block about that, but something about a bunch of horizontal lines interrupting uh, visual artwork was a problem for me. Um, I didn't want to just do reflections or like a, a log of my day because it gets really boring to say, I woke up, I have a cup of coffee, I went to work, I came home, I watched television, I went to sleep. Um, day in and day out. And sometimes my days aren't that interesting. So in here, I gave myself a lot of free reign. It has grid paper, so it's less structured in terms of the types of content. You can draw, doodle, write, whatever you want. Um, but I used it as personal reflections. I used it as a scrapbook. I used it to do readings. I used it for art. Um, I used it for memories, I used it for to-do lists, I used it for all kinds of things. And, you know, no two days look alike, um, because no two days look alike for me. And I don't always have an extensive to-do list or something like that for my personal life, um, thankfully. So um, I like doing this kind of creative journaling in here. This was a 
a spread for a hike that we did. So I did an elevation map here. I drew some of the plants we saw, some of the scenery, um, and then I did a little inset of the, the trail map right here. So I like this kind of cradle uh, journaling as well. Um, it's, it's very time consuming to draw all these details and plan them out. Um, I did this over the course of two days, but I love how this came out. And so I wanna continue doing this variety and mix of things uh, for next year. So that is uh, this and how I've been using it. And I'm going to use a new notebook in a very similar layout, um, but it's gonna be slightly larger. So um, instead of this combination of uh, this for daily and this for kind of overflow long form journaling, because I did actually fill up um, the second half of this book this year. So in, you know, in 2020, I journaled about that much. In 2021, I journaled about that much. And then in 2022, while I was uh, using the smaller book, I also filled up the, the second half of this one. So I realized that I really do want more room than this little A6 notebook, and I graduated up to an A5. Um, now this Kinbor notebook, um, has been called like a Hobonichi duplicate. It's basically uh, this layout in a larger size. And they make this in an A6 as well. I had originally gotten the A6 thinking I would stick with the same size, but then towards the end of the year, I realized that I did want more space. I want more space to be able to put in ephemera and um, kind of scrapbooky things, pictures, um, and a little bit more room in those monthly calendars to put more information in. So I decided to go up to an A5 size it's still quite portable. Um, it's smaller uh, width-wise, than, for example, than this Peter Popper Press notebook. So it'll still be easy to take this when we go on vacation and that kind of thing. So I haven't put a lot in this book yet. Um, it is the end of December and I haven't written in it yet. Um, I'll start it in January, but I wanted to kind of walk you through how I'm gonna be using all the pages. So here we go. Um, in the front here, I have a piece of blotting paper because I'm going to be using fountain pens. Um, I have an inspirational image on the first page. And then this, um, this page I'm going to be using again for tracking my time off. So I have next year down here and I have the current year here. Um, this is another Monday start notebook. I like that in a, in a dated planner. And then over here, we have kind of a calendar index or a uh, calendex, as you might call it. Um, I didn't show you that, but this was kind of how I was using it um, in the beginning of last year. So I was doing some tracking. I was using it to index what I had written, the kind of content I'd written on each um, page in here for where I wanted to maybe be able to um, refer back to the, the individual dates easily. And then I was doing some kind of, um, you know, mood and personal health tracking over here as well. Um, and that worked out well. I didn't keep up with the habit tracking because I was kind of doing that in the individual pages. So, um, for example, here, these notes up here are about my exercise, meditation, and reading. And I think I'm going to track that in different ways. So I'm not going to track that on the individual days. I'm going to go back to the dot tracking method here and have like exercise meditation. Did I read something? Um, and then at the top here and the bottom, you have a lot more space because it's a larger page. So I can do the indexing on the individual dates in the middle of this page. And then I think up here, I'm going to track what knitting project I'm working on and what I'm reading. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to track what uh, pens I have currently inked and maybe do a little bit of ink swatching. Um, so that's another uh, change that I've made in my personal um, journaling is rather, again, than uh, doing a lot of plastic refills, um, I'm trying to switch over to fountain pens. So I now have a little collection that I've accumulated. Um, through my own interest and then through the generosity of my family for buying me some fountain pens. Um, and this is what it looks like. And it's nice to um, kind of keep track of what ink you have in each pen so that you can go back and kind of see how the inks performed over time, which ones you liked, you know, what's my favorite shade of green, what's my favorite shade of dark blue, um, that kind of thing. So 
Um, this is my little fountain pen collection. It's it's hopefully not going to get any bigger than this, um, but I'll be keeping my kind of ink log, currently inked log, down here um, throughout each month. So uh, in the monthly pages, I am going to continue to note down um, events that happened, um, times that we met up with friends, um, times that we went swimming or hiking or um, went to see a show or that kind of thing. And also just times that I scheduled chats with friends. Um, I've been doing more Zoom chats. I think we've all gotten used to doing more video calls um, with friends and family to stay in touch um, since the pandemic. And I'm really grateful for that because we live remotely and a lot of my friends don't even live in my same state. So this is a great way to keep up with everybody and also to kind of check in on my relationships and friendships and make sure I'm feeding and nurturing those regularly. So I can look back here and see, you know, when's the last time I spoke to this person or that person? Um, or, you know, we haven't gone out to dinner with this couple that we're friends with um, in a couple of months. Let's see if we can schedule something with them. So I'm enjoying this for, for that purpose. Um, down here on the left is where I'm going to track my word scores put in my solution and uh, how many guesses I needed that day to solve it there's always at least 30 of these um, rows here in the grid uh, I counted so that'll be sufficient for any month and then down here along the bottom I may put a task or two for the month just like personal things I want to do for that month um, again I don't do a lot of that in analog I prefer to keep things like to-do lists, grocery lists, chores, all that stuff in a in a digital format. And I don't schedule, um, I don't use this as like a planner, like a scheduling planner, because again, that's digital so that my partner can see it. Um, so this is really more about memory keeping and um, kind of uh, looking back on events throughout the year. And now the other uh, item that I used to track in this monthly view was again, kind of social media content. Um, but I've decided to take that out to, to make this less cluttered uh, because this planner has this spread. Um, it's called the yearly plan. And what it has is a blank section at the, on the top half of the page. And then on the bottom half of the page, you get six months. So here you get January through June, and then here you get July through December. Um, I do a monthly wrap up video on my other channel uh, and I like to have a place throughout the month to jot down ideas for what to talk about during that monthly wrap-up. So I'll be doing that here in each of these boxes for the month. Up here, I'm just going to do some brainstorming about video ideas. And then if I end up posting a video on that topic, I can just put the date uh, next to it, when uh, what it was and when I posted it. And I'll be doing that for um, my other channel as well as for this channel on Gage Hill Crafts. So I, um, it took me a long time to, th to figure out how to use this spread effectively, but I think this is gonna come in handy. And again, it's gonna keep these monthly pages from becoming over cluttered with extra stuff. And then the start of each month, you get a um, you get a quote and lined uh, paper at the beginning of the month. Um, but here I have a, a reading project that I want to work on, and it's a book per month. So I'm going to use this page to make notes on my book of the month. Um, and then here you can see that this page is just basically open grid. You do have a timeline down the side if you wanted to use this as an actual planner to track your time or to book appointments. Um, again, I don't use that this way. I use my phone for that. Um, you do get a calendar here in the corner and it tells you what day you're on. And up here you get the month, the day of the month, the day of the week, the week of the year. So this is week one, day one and then a little weather tracker. And the one thing that the Hobonichi had that this notebook doesn't is uh, a moon cycle or a moon phase tracker. So I have some moon stickers and I'll probably be putting the moon phase in um, here. It's just gonna be uh, half moon and full and new moons, um, but that's enough to kind of remind me to um, clue into what the moon is doing. So, and that just repeats. The Sundays are in red, and then the other days of the week are in this gray color. Um, and it just repeats this way uh, throughout the year. So again, you have January 7th is a Saturday. It's week two, day seven of the year. And then you can circle the weather and, you know, use this for whatever. Um, but I used, you know, I use these pages for writing practice. I use them for um, personal reflections. I use them for uh, putting down quotes and reflections on books I'm reading. I use them for pasting in ephemera and things like that. And speaking of ephemera, um, I have this little ephemeris um, that I requested for a gift 
for the holiday season and my family was generous enough to give me. And I think this is like a receipt book or like a cash stuffing envelope or something. Um, but what I'm going to do is use it for stickers and tickets and things like that, mementos that I pick up on our travels so that I don't over bulk this book. What I didn't love about my Hobonichi uh, last year was that um, by the end of the year this thing was trying to burst at the seams um, and I couldn't really use the cover. I couldn't effectively close the cover anymore. So I want to keep um, this notebook as it is and what I'll do is um, let's say I have a sticker or something that I want to put in. I will lay it on the page. I'll draw around it in pencil. On the back of the item I'll put the date that it goes with. So I'd put March, uh, March 8th and then I'll stick this in the March section of my little ephemeris, and then at the end of the year I can come back and glue them all in um, and have them in here for keepsakes. Um, but that's my plan and for that. And then in the back here, um, you do get about 14 pages of blank note paper, and I just use this for collections and lists. So um, I had a list on like what hikes we wanna do um, or home projects. Um, or idea, you know, suggestions for gifts for myself or gifts for other people um, and that kind of thing. And that worked out really well. So I'll be using these pages for that kind of information. There are also a few more custom spreads back here. So this is like a, um, a sample schedule. Um, it has times of day down here and days of the week across the top. So if you had a complicated schedule or if you had maybe um, you were trying to figure out overlapping schedules um, for your family members or for, you know, coworkers or something, if you're using this at work, um, this might be helpful. But I, I don't need this page, so I'll repurpose it. I'll probably scrapbook over here or something like that. Over here, you have something called gift list. So you have the date to or from their name, and then the gift received or given. Um, and this is a nice little tracker. I'll probably use this as a brainstorming space for ideas for, to get for my friends and family. Um, this is called the 21 days plan. So there's 21 of these, day, these um, boxes here with headers and they count down from 21 down to um, day one, and then a, a box here. I don't have a thought of how to use this, so if you can think of anything. Um, I've heard that it takes 21 days to start a new habit, so um, that might be why there's a 21 days plan here. I don't have any new habits that I'm starting in 2023, um, but I might just use this as like a favorites page or something like that. Speaking of favorites pages, there are also favorites pages in here. Um, and so here you can circle book, movie, music, or food, um, and then you can give it a star rating and write a little bit about it. I will probably be using this to track media. Um, I'm tracking books in another way in this notebook, but I'll probably use this to review uh, the t TV series and the movies that we're watching, and potentially maybe new albums that come out by uh, bands that we like. So there's a couple pages of those, and then there's a lot of reference information. Um, so this one says eye exercises. This is encyclopedia, and it's like measurements for shirt sizes, shoe sizes, paper sizes. I don't know that I'll really be using this very much. Um, this is a map of China, and I guess it's um, you know travel goals or things like that, um, and planning down here. Um, I've used this as an ink test page, and I will probably continue to use this as an ink te test page for a while, just to make sure that all of my inks are behaving well on this paper before I write in the, the journal pages. So far, I can say that the Pilot and the Diamine inks seem to be performing very well. Um, they look nice on the paper. If there's effects like shimmer and stuff, I can see them, but they're not bleeding through at all, so that's good. And then I tested a bunch of markers over here. Um, the Zig Clean Color Dots barely, barely, barely kind of want to bleed through. You can see a little tiny bit there where it's just the end where you pick your marker up off the page has bled through just a little bit. So I may not be using those, um, but my watercolor markers, um, I did eight swipes with this really dark purple and it did not bleed. So that was good. And then the highlighters front that I'm using for my work notebook, I just tested them here for fun and they're all good as well. I may eventually, towards the end of the year, when I'm done testing inks, um, I'll probably use this for ephemera. Or um, last year, I actually pasted in letters that I got from uh, my friends who wrote to me. 
Um, so that, that's a fun way to kind of keep, keep those items. And then back here we have um, recipes. This is gourmet recommended and then 24 solar terms. So again, I might take pictures of these and try translating some of it, but eventually I'll probably just paste over um, ephemera and keepsakes and things that I find um, throughout the year. And then in the back, you do get a ruler. Um, it's only in centimeters and millimeters. Um, and then you get uh, personal information, emergency contact and, and that so that um, if you lose your notebook, uh, somebody can hopefully return it to you. So that's the Kinbore notebook. I really like this. I'm so glad that I finally found something that has enough structure and the right kind of structure to motivate me to um, journal regularly without being overwhelming, too structured, or, or anything like that. Um, so that's what I'll be using. And then very briefly, I wanted to touch on a couple of other notebooks. So I do use um, fountain pens, and it's always nice to swatch your inks before you put them in a regular notebook. Um, I got this notebook thinking I might use it for work or something like that, and I decided not to. Um, but this is just a lined, a lined notebook um, with slightly off-white paper, and I've been using it to do um, writing practice and ink swatching. And that's been going really well, so I can see how the inks behave in different pens. Um, I did the Diamine Ink Vent Calendar this year. Um, my mother was kind enough to get that for me. And so initially, as I opened each day, I did a little test with a dip pen. And then as I've been using some of the inks, I've come back with the pen inked up and done a little bit of a test write in here just to see um, how the that pen and ink combination is working out. So I'll continue to do that, and I do have plenty of space still as I get more inks in my collection. Again, hopefully um, not too many more right now because I have 25 inks from this Diamine thing, um, but uh, I have plenty of room. This notebook should last me a long time for doing ink swatching and sort of handwriting practice. And then the last um, notebook I wanted to share was one that I'm using for my reading and uh, class studies. Um, I started out using these uh, decomposition books um, from the decomposition book company. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, they're cool, you know, in that they're printed with soy ink, they're made in the USA, and they're all from post-consumer waste. So there's no trees being killed to make these notebooks. Um, what's not so great is the size and the heft and the, the line spacing is really big. So um, you can see in here the line spacing is, is pretty wide, um, even though these are like college ruled or whatever. I guess in the US we're just used to using very broad. And so when I write, I write pretty big in here. And that's okay, but I noticed that just going through, um, you know, a, one year of classes essentially, um, I already have almost three notebooks worth of notes. And this is a lot. It's it's heavy, it's big, and it's going to take up a huge amount of room on my shelf if I continue in this way. So I was trying to find something that was more compact, and I came across um, the Stology brand. I actually thought I might use it for um, a planner, but I do like a little more structure in my planner. Um, so uh, I'm going to use this notebook, um, which again just has gridded paper, um, for my class notes. And this um, has 368 pages. Um, these notebooks only have about, I think it's like 160 or something like that. Um, so, and the fact that I'm writing a lot larger in the composition books than I, than I will have to in here, I figure I can actually get um, three of these notebooks worth of writing into a single one of these Stalogies. So that's why I've switched over to this kind of a notebook. I haven't actually written in this one yet, but this will be my reading and class studies notebook um, going forward. And hopefully if it works out, I can just continue along and accumulate these um, at a slower pace. Um, I do have a um, Midori cover on this Stology notebook. It's a clear cover uh, because it comes with a pen loop. And sometimes it's nice to just have a pen loop with your notebook. You can pop your pen in there and then take this with you if you're going to a class. Um, or if you're, you know, sometimes I like to read in different parts of the house so I can grab my book, my notebook, and my pen and I'm all set to go. So that's it for my planner stack for 2023. I have my reading and class notebook. I have my pen testing notebook. I have my personal journal and memory keeper and I have my Wonderland 222 
work planner. Um, I'd love to know what you are using for this next year. Um, if you've made a planner stack video and uh, you'd like to leave me a link below, I'd love to see it. And, or if you have another brand of notebook that you'd like to use for any of these purposes and I haven't mentioned it, let me know what you'd like to use. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again very soon. Bye.